representative was kind enough to grace our occasion and he will be addressing the audience and as you are aware uh, this is a uh, international scientific diabetes convention and doctors are from all over there are doctors treating diabetes from all over kerala from neighboring uh, states and even from other countries including uh, from europe from maldives uh, from dubai sharja etc etc please sir thank you very much jyoti uh, dr jyoti dev kesav dev is a very good friend and when he urged me to come and participate in the inaugural ceremony i had initially agreed with great enthusiasm only to realize that i'd committed to the chief minister of kerala to join him at the inauguration or rather the closing of an international cyber security conference in kollam so um, since kollam is at least an hour and a half away uh, i have to really apologize that i will not be able to be part of the originally envisaged later program but i thought i would say a couple of words uh, on this rather important occasion i say important because it's it's wonderful that we have here in tiruvananthapuram such a significant gathering of diabetologists uh, from all over the state all the neighboring states and a few countries abroad uh, i have always been uh, conscious of the fact that jyoti is a doctor who unlike many others particularly uh, takes the research aspects of his profession very seriously he of course is a practitioner in every sense of the term but at the same time he organizes his practice in a very systematic way in order to be able to derive conclusions that would point the way to further advances in the treatment of diabetes and this has been um, to my mind particularly impressive because the vast majority of doctors don't do that they're either research doctors or their clinical doctors but very rarely uh, i find in india at any rate uh, do uh, people with a busy and flourishing practice also write papers attend international conferences and here even organize an international conference so congratulations first of all to dr jyoti dev kesavadev for his approach to medicine and to the subject Secondly I want to say how pleased I am to see you all here uh you are uh, in many ways the kinds of practitioners who are keen on improving your own awareness of the um, illness that you are here to treat and from the point of view of um, of uh, your patients today and tomorrow future potential patients uh very clearly uh your keeping abreast of the latest developments in your field is going to be of inestimable value to the people who will benefit from your expertise as you treat them it is true that um uh you've attempted from what i can see in the brochure to cover the entire gamut of information uh that doctors need to be aware of as they study the practice of diabetology uh very clearly the first thing i noticed the title of your presidential lecture in the program is education 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 and educating the public is of particular importance in india because we have become uh rather notorious i would argue globally uh, for having been the country that has become a sort of global center of diabetes uh, a world capital of diabetes if you like and not perhaps in terms of uh, per capita because our population is so large but both in the incidence of cases and the speed with which the incidence of diabetes has been increasing rather dramatically part of it may be that we have become better at recording what illnesses people are suffering uh, a couple of generations ago uh, it was not always known what somebody was ill of or even died of uh, and some very general imprecise language was used as a result perhaps we are exaggerating some would say how much worse uh, diabetes and heart conditions have become because in the past there was not adequate precise information about causes of illness and death i still believe that this is a cause for serious public health concern the truth is that lifestyle diseases have been worsening in india for one very obvious common sense reason which is that our culture produced habits and cuisines i say cuisines in the plural both 
local and national and, uh, and, and from different regions of the country. Our, 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 our culture produced cuisines and, and attitudes to life that were based on very, very different conditions of existence. A far more rural life with far more physical activity, walking and exercise built into the routine normal day of the consumer. And it is entirely possible, therefore, that eating the kinds of foods that we still eat was perfectly all right a hundred years ago because we were burning them off. And indeed, they were fueling our, 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 our lives of those days. But today, as we've all transformed into couch potatoes, pressing the remote button on the television set and being driven from place to place by our chauffeur-driven cars, that inevitably maintaining the same diet and the same attitudes and the same culture has inevitably contributed to the increasing prevalence of lifestyle diseases. So both diabetes and heart disease have systematically worsened in India. And that's why I, I was pleased to see that title of your presidential lecture as education, 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 because educating the general public, not just the experts like you, but the general public uh, about the dangers, pitfalls, uh, and risks inherent in their daily lives and their normal lifestyles is, I think, fundamental. If you can prevent diabetes through better education, so much the better. If you do not succeed in prevention, however, education is still relevant in terms of managing the management of the disease. <laughs> Thank you. Any lubrication that becomes tepid, alas, does not appeal to me. So um, I'll sip it as I continue haranguing you. Uh, so education in terms of the management of the disease is also important. I think that there is no doubt. Uh, I, as a politician, particularly in this constituency, which despite being the capital of Kerala, is technically 66% rural as a constituency, I meet a lot of people. I have to condole the deaths of a lot of people who pass away at, um, uh, I would say, the relatively young ages of their mid to late 60s and early 70s of illnesses which could have been treated and managed for much longer. And I suspect that part of the reason, I mean, I didn't, obviously I don't ask when I go to a bereaved home um, whether the parent regularly took their medicines, but the fact is there are enough, I think, anecdotal evidence to suggest that particularly in rural India, uh, a lot of illnesses are not properly managed because medicines are not systematically taken at regular intervals, uh, sugar levels are not systematically monitored, uh, follow-up visits to doctors don't take place, and so on. So as I said, education for prevention is the first challenge. But if you don't succeed in preventing the illness, then education in managing the illness and its treatment should not be underestimated in a developing country like India. Perhaps this is not as big a concern in the Western world. I would insist it is a real concern here because I believe that we are losing uh, Indians to illnesses purely because of poor management of their illness. Going on beyond that, of course, is education of the doctors as well. And that, I mean, what you're doing here and what you're doing in other seminars and international conferences, keeping abreast with the latest developments in management and also in treatment of these illnesses. I'm always impressed when I see someone like Jyoti talking about new discoveries, new scientific studies that either confirm his approaches or suggest that he should try something different or usually affirm that not only was he doing the right thing, but that there are additional benefits that were not known when he started the treatment. So this kind of thing obviously is good for the morale of the doctor, but it also is very good for the patient because the patient feels that the doctor, by constantly educating himself or herself, is keeping abreast of the latest technologies and that the patient is benefiting from whatever the breakthroughs are in the treatment of his illness. These, I think, are the, the principal concerns when it comes to education. As a politician, it would be remiss of me not to mention the issue of the cost of treatment. Uh, I think we all know that there are some um, uh, 
intellectual property issues which have been debated extensively. Um, some uh, medication, I think metformin, for example, is available in India at a price that is very much cheaper than the international price. Arguably, that is probably true of almost all diabetes medication, but some are still at international prices. Um, uh, but the fact is that whenever a medication can be manufactured in India, and it is manufactured here, then inevitably prices plummet, uh, partly because our cost structure is lower, and partly because of certain um, uh, process, uh, particularly reverse engineering of certain pharmaceuticals, which of course is in turn attacked by uh, the pharmaceutical companies in the Western world as an infringement of their patents. And I think this issue uh, is not going to be resolved by us in a brief discussion here. But as a policy issue, I would like to sort of nail my colors to the mast by saying that clearly a via media has to be found. I am firmly of the view that uh, obviously intellectual property must be protected, that the creative products of original research understandably need to be rewarded and we should not take away from the, uh, from the, the, the researchers the fruits of their success. But at the same time, I believe that what is reasonable in terms of profit, on the one hand, as a general principle, what is sustainable in a Western economy with the disposable incomes available to patients and insurance companies, bears very little relation to the spending capacity of the patient in a developing country like India. And I would urge, therefore, that we find some sort of satisfactory solution. Our country, I believe 92% of Indians are not insured in terms of medical insurance. And therefore, with such a large percentage of the population outside the ambit of insurance, the argument that is often made in the West that the burden is not unsustainable for the individual patient because the insurance companies are picking up the bulk of the tab, that is simply not true for the vast majority of cases in India. I just want to lay that thought before you, especially all of you who are writing prescriptions, to be conscious of uh, how to strike the right balance between your efforts in ensuring the best possible treatment for your patients and at the same time being careful not to destroy the patient's family in the course of becoming well. You don't want to become broke by becoming well. And that unfortunately happens to a lot of families. Finally, and I have already spoken much longer than I had um, intended to, I do want to um, wish, uh, express the hope that all of you here uh, will enjoy this conference in Tiruvannathapuram and also enjoy the city of Tiruvannathapuram outside it. Uh, you're very centrally located. We have um, some wonderful, splendid buildings not far from here, including our museum. Uh, the Napier Museum uh, can be done in, uh, comfortably in an hour or two, but really has some astonishing exhibits. And right next door to it is the excellent gallery of, uh, of, of uh, Raja uh, Ravi Varma, whose paintings, as you know, are iconic in our country. Uh, and though I must admit that they could be maintained better than they are in the gallery, uh, there's something to be said about going to this rather old house and seeing all these paintings around. So please take some time while you're thinking about HB, 1AC, is it, or, or <laughs> and, and, and metformin and, uh, and all the other things that occupy your minds, please make it a point to also go and uh, divert your minds by looking at what our city has to offer all of you. Um, it's not only a city that uh, is full of potential patients, sadly. It is also a city that offers a great deal of delight to all of you. So with those words, uh, let me... Um, sum up by saying that I hope you will do your best to derive uh, full benefit from this exchange of ideas, information, and, uh, and academic and scholarly updates, that you will indeed focus on the importance of education for prevention, education for management, and education of yourselves. And I certainly hope that you will bear the larger policy issues I've raised also in mind as you go forth from this conference. All the very best. Have a wonderful discussion. Thank you and Jay. Thanks, Associate, for those intellectual words. Uh, your presence itself and listening to you brings a lot of positive energy. And thanks for our blessings and thanks for the precious time visiting us.